Folks, welcome back to Nostalgianomics. Today's video is going to teach you everything you need to know from start to finish on how to turn these into these. That's right. We're going to go through the entire process from start to finish. Everything from where to source and how to source raw singles to how to pre-grade what you're looking for, what the grading companies are looking for, how to fill out a submission on each grading company's website, how to package and ship them for best results and quickest um, turnaround times and making sure nothing gets damaged and even, you know, what, what's, which grading company to send to based on, you know, the tiers of which value is higher based on which one you send it to, you know, is, is the black label the highest, is the pristine the highest, is the PSA 10 the highest. We're going to literally go through every aspect of grading. So after this video, you can be an expert and feel comfortable enough to do it yourself. So let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by Arizona TCG. They're a consignment service for all of your graded cards. So after you grade your cards, if you don't want to do the work of selling them yourself, Arizona TCG will do it for you. They have very upfront fees. It's only 13.5% for most cards. Anything under $100 is an extra $5 shipping fee. But let's be honest, that's what it's going to cost you to ship it yourself anyway. If you want to take it one step further and see exactly what you would get selling it yourself on eBay or having Arizona TCG do it for you, they have this tracking tool to let you know exactly what your payout would be doing it yourself or having them sell it for you. So if that sounds like something you may need, make sure to check out Arizona TCG. The link will be in the description in the comment section below. All right. So before we get to the pre-grading portion and you learn how to turn stacks of these into stacks of these, we got to find out where the best places to source these raw mint singles are. So in my opinion, the best place to find raw mint singles is going to be in person at live events. So Collecticon is one of the nation's largest trading card conventions, or you can go to your local trading card shows, your local card shops, but anywhere in person where you can actually hold the cards in your hand and inspect them for yourself live that's going to be your best place to source. Now, if you don't have time to do that, you can definitely check out eBay. So if we're searching for an Umbreon VMAX on eBay to grade, you're going to want to find listings that have dark backgrounds because white backgrounds will not show up a lot of the imperfections on the edges and corners. And when you get your car, you're going to be upset. So first, make sure the listing has dark backgrounds and then make sure they're clear up close images of every angle of the card exactly as this seller has it. And you can do very well sourcing cards like this on eBay. Now, when you go to TCG player, it's the same rules apply, but a lot of the listings don't have pictures. So you're rolling the dice a bit more because even though it's near mint, that can mean anything from a seven to a 10 condition. And obviously we're not wanting sevens and eights and really nines either. And so on TCG player, a lot of the uh, sellers do have pictures now. So just find one with pictures and you can actually see if it's got a dark background. You can zoom in the same way on eBay of every different uh, edge and corner. And you can still get the best uh, bang for your buck on TCG Player as well. Now, if you're wanting to go for one of the listings that don't have a, any pictures, you're definitely rolling the dice more, but you still can come out good that way as well. And so that's pretty much the places I would look for to source singles. It's definitely in person first. And then you can definitely go to eBay or TCG player with pictures. And then if you really want to roll the dice and buy in, you know, large quantities, you can definitely go to eBay or TCG player to buy in quantity without pictures with stock images. And you can um, do well that way as well. All right. With that being said, let's jump into what to look for on these cards when pre-grading them. All right. You only need two things to submit your cards in. One is a penny sleeve. The other is a semi-rigid. No, you cannot use a top loader. The grading company specifically say no top loaders. You're going to need a semi-rigid. I use the Ultra Pro version. You can use the Card Saver version or other products that are like or similar from other companies, but you do need to have a semi-rigid style sleeve and not a top loader. And also make sure to use a penny sleeve and not one of those ATB sleeves or other colorful sleeves. This is specifically what you want to use to submit your cards. All right, now getting into the pre-grading. Different grading companies have different standards, um, but you want to make sure the centering on the front is as close to perfect as possible as that's what most grading companies look to first. So you're going to want to make sure the silver border is as close to perfect, right? The same width on the top and bottom and the left and right as you can. All right. Now, different grading companies have different standards. With PSA, you can still get a 10 if it's 60 to 40% off, meaning 60% width on one end. 40% on the other, same as top and bottom. When it comes to higher grades, like a Beckett Black Label or Beckett Pristine, it needs to be as close to perfect as possible, as in the same width all the way around. When you get to the back, right? 
Same thing applies. Make sure the centering is, is as perfect as possible. PSA is a little more lenient. They say it can be 70 to 30% on one end to, the, to another. Obviously, with a Beckett Black Label of Pristine, you want it to be a, as perfect as possible to get that those higher grades. Now, the next thing grading companies look for is the surfaces, right? So making sure there's no scratches on the surface, making sure there's no scratches, no rubbing, nothing like that on the surface of the car, making sure it has a clean surface, all right? After the surface, they look to the edges and then the corners to make sure they have no whiting. So as you can see in this car, the surface is really nice on both the front and the back, and you can see the edges all have no issues as well. Now, the corners. The top corners look very good, but the bottom corners definitely have some whiting on them, as you can see. Now, a little bit of whiting isn't always a deal breaker, right? Maybe you can't get like a black label. Maybe it still gets a pristine. Maybe it still gets a PSA 10. Okay, so my general rule is no more than two or three detractors, right? So more, no more than two or th three things wrong. So if maybe the centering's off like 60, 40, or 70, 30, it's still okay. Maybe if it has one or two white dots on a border, I'll still send it. A lot of times it'll still pass. Maybe it has one little edge wear, it'll still pass. But once you start getting more than two or three things wrong with the card, usually it is going to fall below those top grades and get like a nine, 9.5, things like that. And so those are kind of the order of things I look for. Make sure the centering is nice on front and back. Make sure your edges look good. Make sure the, the uh, wear on the actual uh, surface of the card is good. And then last, make sure the corners don't have too much wrong with them. And a lot of the time you're going to be okay. And so going from here, right, you're going to slip that card right in one of those penny sleeves. And then you're going to get out your semi-rigid. So the best way to put a card in a semi-rigid, okay, make sure it's kind of loosened up. Make sure you kind of loosen up before you put the card in. Just hold your finger right on the edge, right? And just slip the card right in just like that. And then once it's in, you can kind of maneuver it around a little bit and kind of get it to where you want it. And voila, you are ready to send that card off for grading. Okay, so let's talk about making your grading card submission and which company to choose. So in this video, we're gonna choose PSA and Beckett to touch on. There are other grading companies out there, but these two are the front runners and the other grading companies are newer, less trusted, and usually their cards hold less value. And they're also less liquid to be able to sell to others because they're less sought after. So first up with PSA, this is their website. Here's Beckett or BGS, this is their website. PSA's pricing structure is based on two things declared value and the estimated turnaround time. So as you see, the higher you go, the turnaround time on business days it takes to grade gets lower. And also you're gonna see this declared value. This is something Beckett doesn't have. Basically PSA, once you declare a value of what you think your cards are gonna be worth after they're graded. And so you'll see $200 or less here, jump to the $500 or less, $1,500, $2,500 and so on. And so they're not super strict on this, obviously, you probably don't want to try to send like thousand dollar plus cars to the two hundred dollar or less uh, tier, but if it's a little bit over, a lot of times they're not going to hit you. If you do get a hit on it, they will upcharge you based on what tier the card should have been sent at. So you could get charged a little more, but if you're getting a card that's that valuable, you're probably not too upset. Becky does the same thing; they base their uh, tiers on how fast you want your cards back. So, um, you know, their tiers start at $14.95 and go up from there. Now, Beckett has something else they do. It's called subgrades. If you don't know what those are, um, these are these grades right here on the slab, right? Where they base it uh, on centering, edges, surface, and corners. And it's not just a 10 grade, but it actually gives you a grade on each individual subgrade of that. If you want those subgrades, you got to pay a little more. But if you send a card in and it gets anything uh, over a 9.5 and it gets a 10 or black label, they're going to upcharge you anyway and throw the subgrades on there anyway. So it doesn't really matter um, which one you send in at. All right. So one of the big detractors for PSA is this collector's club. A lot of people don't want to pay that $150 membership to be a part of this, to get these access to these grading specials. And they say it's $25. However, PSA has made some changes recently, especially with their collector's club plans is it's $150. However, they do give out monthly magazines, depending on if you choose the sports or the pop culture and TCG um, categories. So recently, I sold the card I got this month for $149.99. Yes, exactly the same price that the Collector's Club cost for the year for a free card that I got for being part of the membership. They also have magazines they send out, which are now serialized. And if you get certain serialized member uh, magazines, they can go for hundreds of dollars as well. And so these days being a part of the collector's club, it can actually be profitable to, to be a part of it because with the magazines and the promos they're sending out, 
you're actually able to recoup more than the amount of money you spent to be in the club. So it's not really a detractor anymore. It's actually a positive to be part of the collector's club these days to get these special items. All right, getting back to the PSA membership. So when we get back to the uh, the grading uh, costs, um, if you're okay with waiting the 45 days, this is your cheapest option. It's going to be $14.99. However, when you uh, jump in to the actual grading, right, this is the screen it'll send you to, trading cards, select and continue, grading, we're not doing autograph or anything else. It actually it does have some other special sometimes. This month, July special, um, as long as you're okay to wait 50 business days and you have at least 15 cards and they're under $200 declared value, you can actually get them graded right now for $13.99. If you want them back faster or they're higher value cards, it just kind of goes up from there. So let's go ahead and, and click this. And for this um, you know, scenario, I'm not going to put a whole bunch of cards in, but I will put one card in. Um, we'll go ahead and use like, how about the Blastoise, right? From 151, I believe it's number 200. Um, and I think we had to put maybe 2023 in front of it and maybe EX to get found in their system. And let's see what happens. All right. So this is uh, one of fronts, actually a German version. So be careful there. Italian, Spanish right here is going to be the 2023, 2023 Pokemon MEW. That's the set symbol. EN 151, 200 Blastoise EX, special illustration rare. It doesn't have a picture, but this is the correct one. I'm just going to put in 15 quantity to hit that 15 quantity. It, it, uh, it, it makes you do. And then we're going to say it's going to be worth a whopping $199 per card. And so what you're going to have to do, right, is you have to multiply it by how many of each you have. So if it's $199 for one card, we got to do some quick math. 199 times 15 is going to be $2,985 declared value on that line item. All right. So once we do that, we have our 15 cards. You're going to proceed to checkout. All right. When we proceed to check out, you got to, uh, you know, answer a few things. Do you want it? Do you want uh, them to have a prepaid shipping label or ship it yourself? I always ship it myself because they really overcharge for their labels. And then you have to say, do I want it to be sent to the PSA vault or ship back to me? If you ship to the vault, you can actually sell it out of the vault. They hold your cards for you. I like to have my collectibles in hand. So I always choose ship back to me, but you can do what you want. And here's the price, what it costs, right? $13.99 per item. There's 15 items, right? So it's going to cost you $209.85. And then you have to pay for shipping back to you. So $44.99 for the insured shipping. And let's say, you know, it, it costs you, I don't know, if you, you know, insure it to them, it's $15, we'll say to ship your cards in. So we'll say it's a uh, $44.99 plus $15 plus $209.85. Um, divided by the 15 cards, it really costs you about $17.99 to grade each card after all is said and done, which still isn't bad. Now, the more cards you send will offset the shipping charge a little bit. So it gets a lot closer to that $13.99 charge. I usually like to send between 50 to 100 cards at a time. That way, it usually only costs me between $15 to $16 per card. When all right. And after you put in your payment information and your shipping information, it'll bring you to this page where it outlines exactly how to arrange and package and ship your items. You print off your submission forms and label. And what you end up having is you end up having submission form one, submission form two, and your copy, as well as this barcode. This barcode needs to be cut out and slapped on the outside of the box to let them know exactly where to uh, process it when it hits the PSA facility. If you don't do that, it will cause delay, so make sure you don't forget that. All right, packaging your cards. Guys, don't get too crazy, too fancy with it. PSA doesn't like it. They don't like to go through a ton of tape and a ton of different packing things. Look, just keep it simple, right? Take your cards, put them in however much bubble wrap it needs one or two times around, and put just one piece of tape on it, right? Just one piece to keep it together. And then I'm always a fan of the box inside of a box, kind of like double boxing your boxes and cases, right? I just put them inside a regular shipping box, right? And then inside of a bigger box, just like that, you can pack it bubble wrap. It's always stayed safe. I've never once had a car damaged in any of my orders. I've had plenty of orders over the nine years I've been in the hobby. And make sure your two submission forms go in the box as well. And like I said, that barcode is slapped on the outside along with your shipping label and you're set. That's all you got to do. That's all it takes. It really is that simple. That's the entire process from sourcing cards, how to source them, how to condition your cards and pre-grade them, how to fill out the submission forms, how to package your orders, 
and there's just nothing to it. Don't let this process be too daunting. Don't feel like there's too large of barriers in your way. And you know, it's, it's scary. So you don't want to do it yourself. Guys, this is literally all there is to it. If you have further questions, you know, feel free to reach out, leave them in the comment section as well. And feel free to share this video with any, you know, friends or anyone that uh, has asked you about grading or have been uh, kind of um, on the fence about grading or a little, you know, weary of it. Um, share this video around because, you know, I really want it to be helpful. I really want it to um, kind of tear down that barrier and get more people submitting their cards because there really isn't much to it. And if you want those graded cards in your collection or you want to, you know, up the value of your cards and be able to sell them for more, um, it really is the best way to go about it with grading with one of these two companies. And so um, that's uh, pretty much all I have today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and I'll be back here in a new video soon. I'm out.